Now, I know what the rest of you are thinking. South coast of England, all yachts and beaches, Howard's Way and Cow's Regatta, as much of a football hotbed as the Cotswolds or the Dales. Well, think again. Football in these two great port cities means nearly as much as it does in Liverpool or Newcastle. This is a deep-seated local rivalry. Red against blue, scummers against skates. The delightful names, the two sets of fans have for one another. An absence has only made the heart grow harder. This is the first time their paths have crossed since 2005. And who knows? when they will meet again. Last time they met, Portsmouth won 4-1 at Frat Park. Last time they met in the Cup, Southampton won with a last-minute penalty. Their new owner, Marcus Lieber, took this club out of administration last July. And now Portsmouth face not so much administration as liquidation on the eve of this classic Cup tie. They're hanging on to their survival, both as a football club, as a Premier League club. But all that is forgotten this afternoon. Big John is here. We can start. Portsmouth's most famous fan against their most deadly rivals. Not even the High Court could keep these two apart. At the end of a week in which Southampton reached Wembley and Portsmouth survived a winding up order. This is the main event in these parts. Delayed by one or two balloons. Howard Webb, who took charge of the final itself last season. He's doing a spot of party pooping. And the pitch is clear of waste. And we are ready to go. Pompey's 4,000 travelling fans gathered behind Kelvin Davis's goal away to our left. It's the first Saints Pompey derby for going on for five years, and it's for a place in the FA Cup quarter finals. Five times they've met in cup football, five times Southampton have triumphed. Four times they've met here at St Mary's, four times Southampton have triumphed. Portsmouth may be the Premier team, but they've got some history to defy today. Alongside me, I'm pleased to welcome Kevin Gallagher, who played in a Scottish FA Cup final. And after all the talk about the club survival, will that be on the players' minds one iota now? No, certainly not, Clive, you know it's... When you come to these games, as soon as you cross your white lines, the atmosphere and everything takes over. And in your head is what you've got to do tactically and technically to try and win your team the game. Ball won by Jaidi. There's an offside there against uh, John Utaka, who's fit to partner Aruna Dindan in the Portsmouth attack. Southampton very nearly the team which uh, reached Wembley in midweek in the Johnson's Paint Trophy. Head of forward there by Papa Waigo, dealt with by Wilson. <laughs> Left back is Dan Harding, up towards Ricky Lambert, flicked in towards Papa Waigo, but Horidison has time to deal with it. Lambert is the key man for just about every Southampton attack. Well, he's certainly the key man, he's a clay player, you know, he's the one that gets all the goals, he's the one that we always look for. He's a willing worker, up there on his own. He just asks for that direct ball, he's always the one that tries to get on the end of it. 23 goals for Southampton, plus one for the club. He started the season with Bristol Rovers, it's been a fantastic season for Ricky Lambert. And facing him, uh, Portsmouth back four, showing three changes in midweek because of uh, injuries to Finnan and Ben Haim and the suspension for Ricardo Rocha. Portsmouth have been in the wars. It's an ideal situation as well, Clive, for Southampton to really have a go at them, you know, a makeshift back four, something that they fancy doing is having a go, they're at home, they've got a crowd behind them and the atmosphere at the minute is absolutely electric. 
Antonio will try to launch a long throw up towards Lambert. And Lambert wins it, and Wago helps it on, and it wouldn't quite happen for Dean Hammond. Another throw of the way, you can be sure of that. Well, we try to put as much pressure as I possibly can, set pieces up the park as far as they can. Antonio has got a long throw. Over the head of Lambert this time, dealt with by Wilson, out as far as Utah. <laughs> Southampton keeping on the early pressure, though. <laughs> Thomas this time. Lambert again. Helped on by Wygo. Very calmly back to his goalkeeper by Nadia Belhatch. James looking long to attack up, can't quite take it in his stride, rocked by the Southampton skipper, Dean Hammond. This is Lalana. Some youth in the Southampton team, Lalana is just 21, Antonio the player with a long throw won't be 20 until next month in midfield. They have a, a young French junior international, 20-year-old Morgan Schneiderlin. Really experienced coach, Clive, is at the back, you know, Perry and Jaidi. Two very experienced players there. We'll be looking to, to keep it very tight at the back because we'll be hoping to do a lot of attacking today. Hayden Mullins in an unfamiliar position, taking a bit of a chance but clearing his lines. Of course, with, with that, both of their recognised right backs, Finnan and Van den Burra, through injury. So Mullins, a midfield player, has been pressed into service against the tricky Adam Lalana on the uh, Portsmouth right. James takes the free kick. Headed away by Schneiderly. This is Ryderson playing at the uh, heart of the portion of the defence, and that's become an unfamiliar position for him in the last few years. He's been nominally a left back, Herman Ryderson. Yep, up. This is Mullins. Bassinaz, key for Portsmouth that they get him on the ball. He's their best passer. Diop. He can maybe slow the game down and take some of the pace out of it. Jamie O'Hara. Only Jaidi. Thomas unable to clear. Well, Hart is looking for. He's having a little, a little bit of an argument. The front players. He's looking for movement from the front two. He's not getting it. He's having a delay. He's passing that little bit longer. He's a little bit more comfortable central, Jamie Hara. Antonio can wind up another long throw. Yop trying to get in front of Lambert, and Bryderson was able to deal with it as a result. Portsmouth responding to the threat of this man's throws. Now can Antonio find the right kind of cross straight into the arms of David James, who's captaining Portsmouth this afternoon. Well, they certainly started better for the, open, for the home side at the minute, probably. We're having a go. Rational, they're expecting Portsmouth just to sit in that little bit tight, catch them on the counter attack. Hammond forward, and as far as Bell Hatch, O'Hara, or Yepter, I should say, and Bell Hatch's Algerian international teammate, immediately hounded by Thomas, and certainly Southampton have set the tone with their tigerish play without the ball. Ryderson forward. Off Hammond, dealt with by Perry, and as far as Yebda. Lambert for Antonio. Rides the challenge of Yebda. Now a chance to run at Bell Hatch. Bassinaz comes across to help his left back. Yeah, it's just at times, Antonio, when he's looking at the play, he's got to look up. 
you know, why he goes made a nice little run just a further ahead of him. He just gets his eyes open, takes the blinkers off for a second, he's got a chance of getting in there. Antonio just levered off the ball there, unfairly by Hassan Yebna. And uh, cheap free kick really for Southampton. Chance for them to bring Rani Jaidi forward for the back. Yeah, you just see it's just edged out, you know, a little bit of extra shoulder power. It's a nice place for Antonio to win the free kicks. You said Jaidi up there. Get a little bit of height. Set plays like this. Wayne Thomas has joined in from right back inside the Portsmouth penalty area. Interesting that Lambert is the man who comes out to take the free kicks. It's not a particularly good one, but it's headed into a, a danger position for Schneiderlin. Fascinating that Ricky Lambert, 23 goals this season, the man who can win the ball in the air is the man who's brought out to take the free kicks. It's very surprising, you know, you expect him to be in the box, use his height, you know, his goal-scoring ability, but, you know, he likes to set, take the set pieces. You know, I believe he's, he practices a lot in training from all angles, from all distances to try and hit the target, so it's, it's not like he, he doesn't hit three kicks, you know, he believes in his ability. Alan Pardew was telling us an hour or so ago that he really fancies Lambert today if Southampton get a free kick in around the edge of the Portsmouth penalty area. Forward by Lalana, up towards uh, Lambert. Mullins got back there, this is Bell Hatch. Bassinas. Trying to pick an almost impossible pass for O'Hara, there's just no time for that. Lalana. Got Lambert to his left, couple Wago waits in the penalty area. Lambert crosses. Why goes onside, terrific save by James, no flag. Wonderful stop by the England goalkeeper, but what a chance for Undai Papawago. Well, we just talked about quality, but you're looking at it, you know, it's just a step out from Arrindus and he's not played in the centre of defence for a long time. He's just got caught a little bit there. Why goes sitting on his shoulder, but you know, he's got his hands and he says he can't believe he's missed it, and that's a great chance to put his team ahead. Full marks to David James, but he really shouldn't have been given any chance at all. Been down, unable to make any progress. Diop forcing his huge frame forward, but using his arms illegally. Free kick to Southampton, who are on the up here. Well, it's a magnificent save from David James, isn't it? From that man, but he can't believe it. You just see it. His position and everything is perfect. He has to take the gamble. And you think, could he have pulled it back? But no. And that goes down as a top quality save from David James to keep his, his side in it. In towards Lambert. Wilson got up with him. Mullins unable to clear. Bassinas does. Well, back in turn by Schneiderlin. Hammond beaten to it by O'Hara, who can now break. And there's no flag here either. And Iruna Dindan has got clear of Southampton, but the ball has got clear of him. Well, it's very questionable about the offside there. Both of them made the run, but the referee's assistant kept his flag down. I think he got the Wigo decision right. He was level with the final dis defender, Ryderson, where the ball was played in. But he couldn't make the most of a glaring opening. And David James managed to lean back and just prevent the ball from crossing the line. Here, a Wigo and Ryderson together again. And the big Icelandic international takes no chances with the pace of the man from Senegal. Well, he'll be told he's got the pace. He had to be careful. And again, you know, the pace of Lambert as well. It's, it's quite deceiving. The two of them like to run in the channel. The two centre defenders, Ryder and Walsh, and have got it cut out. Thomas has gone forward for the long throw from Antonio. Lambert has got a flick on. Lalana. There's a free kick gone against Southampton for some pushing inside the penalty area. New owners installed Alan Pardew last July. He is a promotion manager. He got Reading up out of Southampton's current division. He got West Ham into the Premier League. Marcus Liebherr has had to be patient this season because Southampton began with a 10-point deduction in League One. As a result of the administration they found themselves in when the German-born Swiss businessman took over last summer, but they've worked their way up 
into mid-table and into one Wembley final. Good push there on Lambert, still managed to head it on to Wygo. Ryderson away. Calm play from Wilson. Also calm from Mullins. Wilson under pressure, just survived it. Still not out of the corner, but he was fouled. Free kick given. Yes. A little bit dangerous from Mark Wilson playing around his 18 yard box. You know, so that has been set up from Alan Pardew to press him high up the park, cause a little bit of pressure up there. Jaidi's header, Wilson's header. Chance for Tucker to, to dim down to try to set something up, and he's won a free kick here. Fouled by Hammond. That well, was the first time that Jaidi's been asked to, to stop shop. He normally attacks, he's the one that goes and attacks all the balls. Chris Perry, the one that likes to sweep up behind them. Very, very aging legs would have been able to keep the pace of the two postmen forwards during the period of the game but when asked to defend this free kick in a dangerous area hands on hips in the foreground Angelos Bassanos on the far side Jamie O'Hara it's O'Hara and it's swinging and Kelvin Davis watches it go past his left hand post full mark to Jamie O'Hara on loan from uh, Tottenham Hotspur before the uh, transfer embargo was imposed upon Portsmouth. It didn't look as if he would be allowed to return, but the moment it was lifted, O'Hara volunteered to come back and try to help his uh, adopted club out of their current peril. And Avram Grant, charged by the FA for a rant at a referee on the pitch at half-time on Tuesday, has really spoken up for Portsmouth in the last few weeks. Here's Wygo again, and then again the pass, the chance passes him by. Maybe had an opportunity to go first time there, Kevin Fugal. Yeah, I certainly think so, you know, when the ball's coming up, I just think, just here, why not have a toe poke at goal, you know, David James has set his stall. You've got a little toe poke, you catch the goalkeeper on his heels, taking it early, you've got a better chance of scoring and trying to control it. between the uh, two Algerians who will face England in uh, Cape Town on the 18th of June on this left-hand side for Portsmouth a left-back Nadia Belhaj and in front of him the giant Hassan Yebda both in England sites in the summer I think they both go to the same hairdressers as well in Portsmouth don't they? Well, that, is it David Beckham but he can the one that started it similar to yours today hairdress is not a thing that really worry Howard Webb these days he's got a big match on his hands here he knows that some very big decisions taken in the last cup tie between these two five years ago a couple of very contentious penalties with the free kick. Easy enough for Yebda. Dindan. On by O'Hara. Utaka breaking clear. Thomas trying to catch up with him. Hasn't quite happened in attack for Portsmouth as yet, but they do have a corner here. And that's where they had to be careful with Thomas getting back to, to clear the lines, but when you are attacking and get caught in a position, that's when Portsmouth are very, very dangerous. They've got the pace, and unfortunately for the attacker, the ball just sat up for them. It gave Thomas time to go back, but it gives time for Horaiderson to get up the park and use his height. Three of the back four are up here. Headed by Jaidi, turned back in by Yabda, forced away though by Perry. And Southampton can break here, and they've got four in the break, and Alana's on the ball. Oh, he just tried the reverse pass to Lambert. Maybe Weigel was a better option. Antonio seemed to be tumbled off the ball as 
Southampton poured out, but they can come again now with Wayne Thomas. And Dai Papawaigo. He's found a cross, and James has held it firmly to his chest with Lambert closing in. Sliced by Bell Hatch. Welcome to the South Coast derby. Now I just wonder if they really, really know if what it means, some of the Portsmouth players. You know, they have a lot of European players on the side, and I wonder down here, do they really know the South Coast derby and the meaning of it? Bassinos. Perry. Jaini away. Diop come thundering in there. And Thomas looks him back over his shoulder and out of danger. Here's Papa Buba Diop. Nadia Bell Hatch. Jamie O'Hara. Crossed in towards Dindam, dealt with by Perry, hooked away by Hammond. This is better from Portsmouth. Yebda to Bell Hatch. O'Hara, Yebda, O'Hara. Oh, it came off Jaidi and just fell tamely into the hands of Davis, but it could have gone anywhere really off the big Tunisian. Well, that's the best play for Portsmouth, the best piece of play, interlinking play. So Thornton players this time not being able to close them down and you know if they do give Portsmouth a, a chance that half yard, they will find it tough against them. Snyderlin, Hardy. He's found himself in a really good position here. And produces a less than good cross into the side netting. Didn't test David James or offer anything for the four who are in support here of Dan Harding. Well, he does fantastic. You know, he's, he's getting asked today to occasionally get down the line. And when he does it, it's absolutely fantastic. But that's a, the harder one that kind of looked as it coming across for Jaidi. Didn't really know where it was going. And I think the Portsmouth players were possibly looking for a little bit of a handball. This will come for Jamie O'Hara, it's sat up for him to volley, and he volleyed it into the back of John Utaka. Header on by Papa Waigo. Wilson goes back to his goalkeeper. 20 minutes gone of a rip-roaring South Coast derby. Best chances so far to Southampton, and then dive Papa Waigo. They will probably disagree. Wasn't a great deal of sympathy from the Portsmouth fans when Southampton were in dire financial straits a year ago. And they won't find much being returned today of all days. Lambert, Papa Waiko, stopped by Bassinas. Mullins with a chance to get out. Seeking out Utaka. Good covering from Perry. Southampton back four haven't had a lot of football in the last few weeks. Adam Pardew made three new signings in defence in the January transfer window. They've been playing in the League One games. They're not eligible for this competition. Perry hasn't played for three weeks. Jaidi's had just two cup ties since the turn of the year. Harding came back on Tuesday after four games on the bench. Thomas hasn't started a League One game since the turn of the year. Just wondering then, Clive, if the game stays at the pace it's been played at just now, how their legs will, will hold up with his three of the back four. Are, they said they're possibly the wrong side of 30 now. O'Hara. That's a terrific challenge from Snyderlin. Tossed forward by Thomas. Mullins calmly done. This is the 40th game of Southampton's season, already seven more than Portsmouth. But uh, Alan Pardew's team are unbeaten since the turn of the year, and only Birmingham City have beaten them in cup football all season long. It's a fantastic run he's got. The belief in the players. Davis coming off limits and conceding a throw in. Club captain Kelvin Davis. Bell Hatch. 
Yepdo. In the space here from Mullins. O'Hara. Header away is by Perry. Wago has lost it to Diop and it's hit by O'Hara and it's a fantastic save by Davis. Wonderful strike from range by Jamie O'Hara. Matched by the stop of Kelvin Davis. Well, I mean, there's no right to hit this, has he? But he sees it. Jidey's coming out first time, but what a strike. But look at that, it's getting a little bit straight. Gives Davis that chance to stretch his six foot plus frame. Wilson and Horidison have fought for the corner, which O'Hara takes and which Davis <laughs> takes to complete our wonderful little bout of highly competent goalkeeping to deny Jamie O'Hara first from the shot and then from the swinging corner. Lambert with a flick on. This is Papa Wigo. Just unable to force the ball beyond Bell Hatch, but he's lost out to Lalana. Lalana's cross in towards Wigo again. Mullins away. Diop. And as far as Thomas. Whom Alan Pardew actually sold to Portsmouth from Charlton nearly three years ago. Mullins, who also played for Pardew at West Ham, as indeed did David Jones briefly. And Mullins here was a key man for the now Southampton manager in his days at Upton Park. It's once or twice players getting rather carried away by the occasion. <laughs> Occasions like this you do, you know, and especially Southampton players have got a right to, you know, a couple of divisions below Portsmouth and it's a big prize at stake, you know, going out in the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. And a big scalp as well. Inevitably the uh, biggest crowd of the season here at... Uh, St Mary's 31,385 just a little down on the uh, attendance for the FA Cup tie against Manchester United last season Utaka into Yebda and the ball just bobbled a little in front of Hassan uh, Yebda I'm just wondering deep down in his head if he's still thinking about his injuries we've done a earlier Nice little training session before to find out if he was fit. Ready to play, and uh, I'm just wondering in the back of his mind, Clive, if he's still thinking about his injury a little bit. Yeah, that fitness test took place here on the pitch just over an hour before kickoff. Hassan Yebda had to convince Avram Grant that he was fit to start here. Thrown straight to Lambert, the last bat he wanted to give it to. Hit Horidison. Lalana couldn't control it. And Bassinas settles things down for Portsmouth. O'Hara. Bassinas. Does pick a pass well and he's found Bell Hatch. He's got some pace. Clipped into O'Hara. Took on a little bit too much, and Antonio got to him. Diop finds only Wigo. Now Lalana. Schneidlin. Harding. Alana. Turned away by Wilson. Perry very, very quick to the ball to deny him down. Lambert. Hammond. Away by Wilson. Thomas having to go all the way back. 
to Kelvin Davis. Wilson up above uh, Lambert. Southampton have won their last five home games. Different league to Portsmouth, but different habits at the moment. Portsmouth without a win since their last success in this competition three weeks ago. Cross from Antonio. Straight to Belhage. Yep, that. Belhage showed too much of it to Dean Hammond. Area. But Dean Hammond again, you know, he's biting at the heels, leading from example, captain. He's not the one who's a little bit short of match fitness at the moment. He just came back in the middle of the week after uh, an absence of more than three weeks nursing an Achilles injury. Good work by Jaidi. Here's Waigo. Looking for Lamb, but it was only just cut out by Wilson. Had to improvise there, and he's lost out to Antonio. And won it back. Schneiderlin, Lambert. Chance for Din Dan to set Portsmouth going forward. Jamie O'Hara. Utaka just stumbled, but he's got some space to pick across. It's not the best. Only away as far as Yebdar, though. Wango got back to deny Papa Bouba Diop. Bassinas. Belhaj. Ferocious pace about this game. Utaka. Looking to run Thomas. One of the best of crosses after all that. It was amazing me when you, you do the hard thing and get that half a yard and then you can't deliver the final thing. You just see it. Just drags him in his right, gets half a yard from Wayne Thomas. It looks like it took a little deflection. The referee and his assistant hasn't seen that, have they? Now the throw has gone to Southampton. Wigo. Antonio. Here goes Wigo again. El Hatch reacted well. Among uh, his other many the duties at Portsmouth, he is the PFA representative, the uh, big centre back, so he's had a lot of negotiating to do, particularly on the months when the players haven't been paid properly. Yebdar to O'Hara, away by Perry, as far as Diop, and it's hit by Yebdar, and it's charged down by Schneiderlin. Came off Yebdar again, away by Thomas. Kind of gave it away, Bassi asked it with his reaction. <laughs> Normally players try and disguise it a little bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think the apologies are nothing, I need for a handshake. Certainly caught him on the uh, top of the arm. I think sometimes the referees uh, normally just bring out a yellow card very quickly for that, don't they? I think that's probably why he was trying to shake Howard Webb's hand and he was having none of it. He's got gloves on in the first place. Lambert with a header on. Here's Adam Lalana. Miss Q. Mullins away. All the uh, Southampton support strikers and midfield players have got to do is feed off Ricky Lambert. He's winning more than his fair share in the air. Belhaj, O'Hara, Dindan. Jock making a run through the centre, tracked by Harding. Little back hill, and O'Hara hits it first time again. Well, it's good link-up play from Ahara. You know, he likes to get on the ball, link-up and become the, the player that creates the subject. But this time, Diop, nice little back heel. And again, as you said, Ahara gets into those positions and has those shots and causes problems. He's produced the save of the match so far 
from Kelvin Davis. The clearest opening has fallen to Southampton's and Dai Papawango, but it's still goalless as we pass the half hour mark. Wango trying to do something about that. Harrison can see the corner. It's a nice spell of pressure again from Southampton, go from one side. Straight up the park. And he'll be happy. Alan Park doing away his teams. Opened the game in the opening half an hour. Once again, the big goal scoring centre forward will take the corner. A lot going on in the box. The Portsmouth man down and in some pain. It's Papa Booba Diop who takes some knocking down. I just wonder if someone was standing on his toes. There he is, number eight. Do you see it? Just catches straight on his toes. His feet, his toes are cold. On purpose or not? Well, I don't think it's on purpose. I think just when you're coming together, you're trying to mark each other. You're not looking where your feet are going, are you? And I think it's just uh, his feet aren't warmed up yet in his boots and took it on his toes. Randy Jaidi. Tunisian meets Senegalese in the wacky world of the South Coast derby. Lambert again. David James has lost it! Oh, what an opportunity! Oh. Jaidi couldn't take it, he was a surprise as everybody that David James made such a basic error. Well, he's come out, it looked comfortable, didn't it, for David James? And, you know, we were just wanting Ricky Lambert not to be taking that corner, to be in Jaidi's position, because strikers in that position are always switched on for anything that comes off a defender or a goalkeeper. Header on by Tiop, header away by Perry. It's a bad moment for David James. And there is a subplot to this game after James with a long spell out through injury. He's played the last five games now for Portsmouth after just one match in nearly three months. Tries to reclaim his England place. He's played just 75 minutes of international football since last April. And have a big international coming up against uh, Egypt live on ITV at the start of next month and James will hope to be giving an opportunity to re-establish himself in that match. O'Hara. Alana got it away. Tame from Basinas. Just like this spell now, it players just have to get a little bit of a breather for Southampton just to get the charge up the batteries for the next 10 minutes. We've not to half time to soak up any more energy that they'll need because Portsmouth at the minute haven't quite got their foot in the ball as they would have liked it. They just haven't had the space or the opportunity to play the game the way they want to play it. The intensity of Southampton's approach is hurrying them continually. Jaidi looking for Antonio but finding only Bell Hatch. Portsmouth's approach is more studied. Ryderson, away by Perry. It's good defending from Southampton. Well, Ryderson's got nothing to look at. He's looking up. The Portsmouth players aren't coming off to get it to feet because the Southampton players are so tight on them. Mullins. Utaka. Wilson. Bell Hatch has found some space here and found a really good first touch and a useful cross which Jaidi has to respond to. Yepped up. That's well claimed that by uh, Kelvin Davis. He's done really well, Davis, on the times he's been asked to, to do something, he's had a fantastic save. When you're asking your goalkeeper to play sometimes as a sweeper, and come out in those positions, and he's done it well so far. And it's there again, in front of Wilson again, and able to direct it to Lalana. Mullins with a rather hasty clearance. Well, he's not going to give them seconds, is he? 
Hayden Mullins knew it. You could actually feel his breath on his neck. But Lambert tried to close him down. Goal before half time for either side could just change the complexion of this cup tie completely. It really is very evenly contested thus far. Antonio with the throw. Lambert again with a flick on Lallana was there and James responded well that time all right just scoop it off the head of Adam Lallana good alert goalkeeping by David James Dindan survives the handball appeals Dion but a familiar combination Antonio's prodigious throws Lambert's skill as well as power in the air but James responded well he was asked upon and all these set pieces are going to come in but again, Lambert, I mean, he's wanting everything in the air up there. And you're looking for your striker, all your running midfielders to get in there, but David James just got in ahead of Lalana to clear his lines. He's such a clever header of the ball. He's not just big, he holds the ball up well, obviously scores a lot of goals. It's the way that he diverts and directs the ball with little glances of his head, which creates opportunities for those around him. Scored 40% of Southampton's league goals this season, Ricky Lambert. I wonder how many of the other 60% he set up. Well, it's certainly part of the whole setup and the makeup that the way Southampton play. The Leading set scorer in League One. Well, it's a certainly fantastic record he's got, and you know it's it'll certainly open the eyes of bigger clubs in the top divisions. Now, the last time uh, a team from the third tier of English football went to the quarter-finals was two years ago, Bristol Rovers. Who was the main goal-getter in that Bristol Rovers run to the last eight? Ricky Lambert. Got six in the run, including a late fifth-round winner on his birthday against Southampton. Lambert with a little flick on. Well, he fouled Wilson in order to get to that. Clever little flower, no? No, just when you're leaning your body in, and he's actually angled it just as you said earlier. His ability to see and spot the way that players are running as well, and just knocks into the path. Yep, done. Bassinas. Again, no time. Was foul this time by Wygo. Referee couldn't have been better placed. Certainly knows he's in a game, Bassinas. In that area, when he gets the ball, he can't afford to get the two or three seconds he would like to get on it. Time for the two principals to think about what they're going to say to their teams at half time. O'Hara. Throw it to Portsmouth. Mullins has given it away. in fact going in with uh, Wilson and he did catch him just a little bit there the aftermath of the follow through that catches Wilson and that's why as football players we wear shin pads if they take the brunt of those kind of tackles could have been quite nasty that it could have been you know on the follow through as well I think the initial one is that Schneiderlin's got his eye on the ball he's not got his eye on the man's leg Played in that European 
championship winning team of theirs six years ago. He's been around the block. He'll have played in some very, very tasty derbies for Panathinaikos. Antonio with a long throw. Away by Wilson, unchallenged. Turned back in by Hammond. Head run by Lambert. Flags are offside. Why go? Must have looked very, very close. The referee's assistant looking along the line. You just see here, just as a header comes in. Oh, he's not, is he? I tell you, if, if oh, you're going... There's, there's the touch, sorry. It's maybe level, Kevin, maybe. Yeah, if you're going by the letter of the laws, to me he's onside. And that's just not the strikers, isn't you? <laughs> right, some forward. O'Hara reached it, did it come off Jaidi? No, OK. That was a good play for Portsmouth. I like Jamie O'Hara. I like him when he gets on the ball and he's a nice little interchanger. Harding to Weiger. Knocked it against Wilson, corner kick. Seems to have uh, just got clipped there and died Papa Weiger. I think he just took a little slight elbow to the ribs when he's the coming of the gather of both players. We'll take the corner. Teddy back by Thomas and James somehow responded. Initial corner was all right over his head. Didn't respond to that, but he responded when it came to him. And now Dindan can break for Portsmouth. He's got Bell Hatch and Utaku, I think, ran into an offside position beyond him. And Dindan was tagged. Hasn't really happened for Utaku or Dindan yet this afternoon. has rather passed them by. But Kevin, as, as the afternoon wears on, will Portsmouth be able to play more of the kind of football they want because Southampton have put so much in already? Yeah, I think, I think that's the way it's going to happen. You know, Southampton, they're pressing as hard as they can when they get in, in and around the halfway line. We've seen it for so long. How long? the Southampton legs to be able to do it we've seen it in little occasional spells Portsmouth players have been able to play but just when they think they're getting the upper hand Southampton foot on the gas again and stop them they certainly won't like for motivation at any stage this afternoon nobody will leave anything out there that's for sure well, well David James has had Ups and downs throughout his career, he's had ups and downs in 45 minutes here. Just going to be the one added minute. He has been maybe the central figure in this compelling first half. Mullins. Wilson. Ryderson. Yep, up. Yop, behind you, here's Lalana. now Lambert, Wigo to his left, Lalana here to his right, he's got away from Diop, couldn't quite get away from the recovering bell hatch. Bassinas, oh, what a chance he took there, Hammond got to him, but it's only a goal kick. Well, we've seen it again, you know, they've got their breath back again and they're still pressing Portsmouth. But Lalana, he's looking for the free kick, a little clip in his heels, but I just think... He just ran out of enough steam to take him another 10 yards further on. This is the other one, David James again over his head, but there it is. You know, he didn't really know much about it. As it's came, he's just got his arms up, he's made himself look absolutely massive. And he's just clipped his arm. His goal has lived a charmed life on occasions, although Kelvin Davis, his opposite number, has made the save of a half from Jamie O'Hara. But the two keepers so far have shut out everything that has been thrown at them and the South Coast derby could still go either way. It's 8-0, Pompey nil. Southampton, the leading civilian port, the home of the Ocean Liners, Portsmouth, the home of the Royal Navy. It's said that the great rivalry between the two cities began when Southampton dockyard workers crossed picket lines in the 1930s when Portsmouth docks were out on strike. 
any excuse. There have been some fascinating encounters. They talk here of a Mick Shannon goal that sent Pompey down to the third division at Fratton Park of Steve Moran's last-minute winner in an FA Cup tie at Fratton. Of the last meeting when Steve Bennett gave a penalty in the last minute, which Peter Crouch converted for Southampton. Who will make the headlines this afternoon here? Southampton have not beaten a top-flight team since they were relegated from the Premiership in 2005. Drop with the header away, Jaidi. Here's Bell Hatch. One back by Antonio. Holding off Bassinas. This is a good break by Antonio, and he's got support here. Over the head of Lambert, Lallana, good save by James! And hooked away by Wilson. I say a good save, Kevin Gallagher, it was better than that. Oh, that is unbelievable, that's top draw, world-class goalkeeper. Lallana thinks he's scored, you know, he's coming in the back post, you've got to look at the defenders, over his head. But the reaction from David James. Antonio's header, dealt with by Diop. Up as far as Utaka, Jaidi keeping the pressure on, Lallana keeping the pressure on. The header was close to James, but there was so little distance between Lalana, who headed it, and James, who stopped it. The reactions were not really those of a 39-year-old man. They were a lot better than that. Full marks to David James. Yebda. Mullins. Header on by O'Hara. Jaidi stumbles, uh, but Utaka has been penalised. If the World Cup final's begun tomorrow, who would be your England goalkeeper, Kevin? Well, David James on saves like that has got to be obviously back on form again. You know, he's, he's certainly angry with one or two of his defensive things, but, you know, he's not always passed with one bad mistake, but with saves like that, quality. Snyderlin. Mullins survives the handball shot. O'Hara. Helped on by Bell Hatch. Now, here's a chance for Dintan all of a sudden. Aruna Dintan! That wasn't far away. First glimpse, really, we've had of the marksman from Ivory Coast. Well, it's just the pace it says Hampton get caught out. You know, they're getting to forget the back door has to be closed because of the pace and the power on the counter-attack of Southampton. But Dindan on his right foot is very dangerous and... Wow, that is close. That's a better angle. Venice to Kelvin Davis, he might just have had it covered, but it was a, a worrying moment for him and for Southampton. Dindan, who got a dramatic equaliser for Avram Grant in the league game against Sunderland in midweek. Almost striking against the head in this one. Ryderson leaves it, Bell Hatch deals with it. That's almost as if half-time didn't happen. As good a chance as Southampton have had, as good a save as David Jones has produced, and then as certainly as good a moment as Aruna Dindan has had at the other end immediately. Yeah, you're looking for, aren't you? Both managers are basically said the same as the, the first half. Avram Grant maybe change a little bit. Say, look, anything we can get at the 18 yard box, you've got to try and test the goalkeeper. I'm fascinated by this policy of using Ricky Lambert to take the free kicks. He takes his delivery is good, but they could do with him on the end of them too. You never know, he might have a shot. Catches all out. All that it wasn't worth the uh, journey out there to take it. O'Hara tracked all the way by Thomas, forward by Harding. That's really good to pick out Wigo. Now Antonio. Antonio's cross. Hammond arriving. He couldn't steer it back across the face of goal. Well, it's good play from Southampton yet again, and it's a nice little dink up in the air at the back post. 
Well, Hammond just wishes at that time he'd been practising on a training pitch with his left foot. I'm just wondering the thoughts going through his mind. You know, he's really changed it a little bit. I don't see any point in him at the minute. He seems to have the upper hand. on his, the back of his neck last week. It was a statement from the executive chairman here, Nicola Cortese, saying that the league results have not been satisfactory. They haven't lost a game since the turn of the year. So, three million pounds has been spent. Expectation equals pressure in this game. Southampton at their level are a mini Manchester City at the moment. And Pardew has the responsibility of spending Marcus Liebherr's money well. but four of the last five league games have been away from home and they've reached a Wembley final in the fifth round of the FA Cup in the midst of all that. And he gets a little warning. <laughs> right, sir. I think as soon as you spend money, Clive, I think the pressure gets added. No matter how much money. I've just taken six points in those five league games and just having threatened to force their way almost improbably into the playoff picture, they slip back into mid-table. O'Hara with a free kick, Diop arriving, that was a chance. There was uh, a moment there when I think Harding, who was ostensibly marking Diop, said something to Jaidi, maybe he should have taken him here. I think Jaidi's not looking at him, Jaidi's not looking over his shoulder to see him getting picked up, and I think that's what Harding was saying to him, he said, you've got to look over your shoulder, the biggest man's behind you. As to Yebda. Harding had a bit of a flash at him. Been penalised. I feel as myself a little bit aggrieved. He's had a kick out there, but you know, I think it's just a slip more than a tackle than anything. I think it was a referee's assistant. It was close to the ball. We gave the free kick. goes the higher the value on the opening goal of this time who will score it Bassinas takes headers by Jaidi helped on by Antonio Horidison first to it Mullins Dindan Jaidi rather barged into him as handball was it by Dindan it's going to be a yellow card for Aruna Dindan oh. and for a derby marching there's not been that many yellow cards going about at the minute, and you get a yellow card for deliberate handball. We've seen a, a handball earlier from Bassinas. He never got the yellow card, but this time his teammate unfortunately gets one. And I think the difference came. I think Dindan was trying to cheat there. He was trying to nick the ball beyond the defender. Header from Diop at the other end. Yebda only as far as Hammond. Now Harding. A little bit late there by Yebda for he kicked to Southampton, Harding down in some pain. That little bit of payback, Harding having a little nibble at him earlier. And this time Yebda is the one just tracking back, just leaving your foot in that half a second longer than you possibly should. Again, Lambert will come out to take the free kick. He's had two Clive and hit the near mother. First man. He needs to get a little bit better with them. Get them up. Players up there in the box. Jaidi and Thomas are in there. Forced away though. Bell Hatch will scamper forward. And there's no flag here. This is Utaka. Taking on Harding. John Utaka. Kelvin Davis had to make the save. Well, there's two of the players being caught out as well, isn't it? Perry and Harding, and in the other Harding's pace, I had to get back and put the pressure on attacker. Eventually, basically giving him a bad angle to shoot from. One moment Southampton were threatening, the next moment Portsmouth were almost scoring.
Rasinas. All the way back to O'Hara. Trying to tee himself up for a volley. Wilson couldn't get it. It's bounced through for a corner kick. Just a little moment there when somebody had a grab at the shirt of Aruna Dindel. I think it was Chris Perry. Yeah, just as it comes in, just see it there. Perry's got a full grip of the jersey. And you just wonder if the referee's assistant could have helped the referee out in spotting that in the box. And a bit of brave assistant today of all days. O'Hara with the corner. Stint down at the near post. Papa Buba Diop. Herman Hryderson is there. Way by Ruddy Giardi. Back in by Diop, and that's a goal kick. It's a let off for Southampton. It's a chance to keep a little bit more pressure on them. It's just a weak knock back. Again, it's Southampton fans, Clive, trying to get behind them and get that drive back in, as Alan Pardew has been saying all week. It's a 12 player, as the supporters here. You look in the history books and they tell you that the first game between the two was a friendly. Oh, yeah. At Fratton Park in 1899. 35 meetings in official competition since then. Southampton hold the lead, but they met in the Southern League long before they came together in the Football League. And they've been at each other for a century and more. Hammond. Two Portsmouth players go for the same ball, but it drops for Jock. Bassinas. Bryderson. Thomas's header. Antonio. Why go on the move? Bryderson watching it carefully. It will fall for Lambert. Waiting for James to come. David James just seems to have pulled up a little bit there. He's just holding his groin. It. Just when he's sliding out here. He's coming out at the feet. I think he just jars his knee as he clatters the ball. And as he's jumped the hip a little bit, he's still feeling it. Feeling what? He's had a bit of a car problem of late, and there's been an ongoing knee issue with David James. Well, we're going to see the first uh, change, and it's going to be up front for Portsmouth, and this is Owusa Abe, a.k.a. Quincy, which is his nickname. Arsenal fans will remember him, Birmingham fans will remember him, Cardiff fans will remember him. And there seems to be some confusion as to who's going to be replaced. It's going to be Anglos Basna, so that's going to be a change of emphasis in midfield for Portsmouth. Because Owusu Abe is a very different kind of player. He's just come on loan to the club from Spartak Moscow. Gala International played in the Champions League. Ryderson. It's like Papa Buba Diop sort of got into the anchor role now in uh, midfield, and Wusu Bay will come down the left hand side. And they've gone 4-3-3 three, three here, Kevin. Yeah, it's looking very much like that. You know, Diop just sitting in front of the two central defenders. And two in front of him and then two wider. Push further forward. I think it's possible to stop Southampton from pushing forward with the way they've been pressing. Now they're trying to turn the tables on him a little bit and stop Southampton from coming out. Antonio's long throw is too long. Coming up to the R mark. Mullins just slipped as he played it forward. Cut out by Schneiderlin. This is Hardy. Lambert's on the move. Wilson away. Yep, done. Certainly showing no signs of any injury he's been carrying for his fitness test. Yep, guys, managed so far in the game. Steinle, Lalana. Why goes on side here?
Blocked by Mullins. Harding. He's found a way out beyond the end. Uh, looked to curl it. Weak in the end. Well, he's on to his weaker right foot, isn't he? He's very much left footed Harding. Sun always shines in this part of the world. It's still a bitterly cold afternoon. As Antonio tries to stumble forward. He's got his decision. He's got into his area as well, where again, he'll be getting his long throw in the box. You just see Jaidi trotting up the park to add his presence. It's getting louder, if anything. Antonio will take the throw. Towards Lambert. It bounces for Lalana. Good improvisation by young Adam Lalana. Here goes Owusu Bay. He can shift. Good recovery by Hammond. And again. Just wants to uh, remind the uh, new arrival what this occasion is all about. And I think he's going to see a yellow card for his troubles. Well, that's a captain's role, isn't it? You know, he's helping his defenders out, he's backtracking. You just see it there, a little bit over aggressive, the ball's out the park. And Howard Webb was just having none of it. But there's a good referee in as he stopped Jamie O'Hara coming, just having a word with him. Just now, he's just telling him to calm down, because things could spill, especially in a derby match like this. Free kick should be off the pitch, really, that's where the foul was. The defenders do that quite often, you know, when it just sneaks over and the referee's giving a free kick or whatever. The defenders like to have a little nibble at you off the park. It's a good example of where a referee can give a free kick when it, when it, even when the defender wins the ball in the tackle. That's two fours. And Hammond not only penalised but booked. O'Hara attacks. In towards uh, Yeddar, it might come here for Utaka, smuggled away by Thomas. And it's disappointing for Wilson. Well, he's apologising, isn't he? He knows that's a chance to keep the pressure on the defenders for Southampton. Which way will it turn? I don't think you can point away at this moment, Clive. <laughs> because as soon as you say, as soon as Southampton have a chance at David James's goal, Portsmouth got the other end and have a go. Kelvin Davis's goal. He's very open at the minute. Owusu well, Abe has uh, lost that in the sun. David James, the goalkeeper behind him, just put a cap on. Antonio. Why go? Turned in by Thomas. Diop couldn't get it away. Lambert holds his ground. Here's Lalana. James to the rescue again. Thomas developing into a personal duel between those two. Well, he's certainly getting the chances, Lalana. But just watch Lambert. He knows where the players are round about him. And again, Lalana making the run up around him. But again, only half heartedly hitting his shot. Yep, Dark. Throw in finds Dindan. Schneidlin finds him too. Mullins back out to Yebda. Over the head of Owusu Bay. Thomas only as far as Bell Hatch. And throw in has gone Southampton's way. Style guru, David James, fashion leader, and a very necessary peak cap with the winter sun now shining in his eyes. We've just seen it only seconds ago, didn't we? With Rosa Abea on the far side, he was staring at the ball straight into the sun, you just completely lose it, it's so low behind the stand. Oh, 
Kara in towards Dindan, headed down to Otaka. Hammond responded. O'Hara back in there, Hammond yet again. O'Hara again. It's come for Yebda. It's blocked by Perry, they'll go for a corner. That's a good spell of pressure, but a good defender from Perry. Nice little block to stop the shot, but now they've got to ask the defender inside the box. More height in the back post, now, isn't it? Jamie O'Hara takes. It's that near post ball again. They've got to get it better ones in than that. They've got the height in the back post. They've got five absolute giants in there, and you go and hit the near post. Dinten into the path of Yebda. It'll come for attacker, and now for a Wusu Abey. It pulls with lead. The substitute. Scores his first ever goal for Portsmouth, and it may just turn out to be one of the most famous in their modern history. If it wins the South Coast derby, Quincy Owusu Abey will never be forgotten. Well, what can you say? You know, this is about taking your chances when you do get a chance. He sweeps across, but how nonchalant does he just do it? He doesn't go for a strike, he goes for placement. And when it comes across to him, he just shifts it left on his right foot and a nice little bend and place shot past Kelvin Davis he's just shown Lalana Southampton the, when you do get a chance that's the way to score well his message is clear there was something pretty heavenly about the finish only twice since Christmas have Portsmouth held the lead in any game for less than a minute at the end of the Coventry replay in round three and then for a little over half an hour against Sunderland in round four they've got a little less than that to hold out for this time think of the receipts in the quarter-final but they're not there yet not by a long chore Harding Antonio Hammond is there here's the goal scorer Wusu Abey hooked into the path of Bell Hatch early ball in towards Dindan just couldn't quite connect with it Harding did well to cover from fullback well again it's one end to the other isn't it but again it's a nice early ball looking for Dindan He's just got a better of Harding, but he just never had that extra yard to put the end product on it. But he's certainly livened up the crowd again. Snidlin's header. This is Bell Hatch. Here's a Wusu Abey. He's only 23 years of age, the goal scorer, but he's already lived the life of three footballers. He was with Ajax originally, they released him, Arsenal picked him up at 17. Born in Amsterdam, capped by Ghana, home club Moscow, current location, the south coast, and the headlines in tomorrow's papers, unless Southampton can reply. Want to have to pay by the lesser for a replica shirt with his name on the back, Quincy Owusu Abey. <laughs> Today, is you just pay for your own name in the back, make it as short as possible. Harding with the free kick towards Lambert. There's the reply. Portsmouth led for less than three minutes. It's Ricky Lambert again. For Southampton, 24 goals, and as soon as that free kick was airborne, only one man was ever going to get on the end of it. Well, there's a big change as well, Clive. Lambert's not taking the free kicks, he goes in the box, his first presence to get his head on it, get it in the back of the net, and get his team on level peg. Absolutely fantastic change of a set piece taker. And as we spoke about earlier, if he goes up there, he's a magnet inside that box. Bell 
match for Portsmouth. And that changes the momentum of the game. He is a game changer. Well, you kind of wonder again defensively. Wilson, well, we've seen it in the first half, he's not getting close enough to pick him up. And yet again, he's there. And you can't let a centre forward with his goal scoring progress. You can't leave him a yard. Here's Weigel. Antonio waiting in the centre. David James hangs on. This is what you bought, sir. Well, he's got a bit of a smile on his face. You know, it's lifted again for the home crowd. Just when the things went down from the crowd went up. But as we see it again, why goes? He's got his head up, he's done fantastic. He's trying to get a power, but you know, it's a tough call when you try to beat a goalkeeper of David James's stature. From that angle. Not the change for Portsmouth. You're not singing anymore. Tucker is going off and his replacement will be Frederick Piquiot he's actually been a fixture the last couple of months in the uh, Portsmouth team but he hasn't scored a goal since the turn of the year the 31 year old on loan from Lyon he is a French international Papawago meanwhile is going to give way to Lee Barnard another recent acquisition by Southampton has only played three full games and one brief substitute appearance since arriving from Southend three weeks ago where he scored half that club's league goals this season so two very potent men together now in attack for Alan Pardew the thing about the change as well Clive is I see why he was getting a little bit more tired he was going back into midfield a little bit more Barnard fresh feet Keep him up and keep the pressure on. Diop. Dindan. Mullins. O'Hara. Dindan's offside. Didn't concentrate. He was looking right along the line. He shouldn't have been caught. You know, when you're looking along that line, they should never, ever get caught. Just a little nudge that Lambert gave his marker there, just before he steadied himself to jump, just unbalanced his marker, got enough space to head the equaliser. It might even have just taken a slight deflection off the man jumping with him, but he's got Barnard for company now. Antonio. I used the word in the first half about Ricky Lambert, he's clever. He's big and prolific, but he knows the game. Oh, he does, and especially inside the box. You see, you know, Wilson, he's a big defender. You know, he's getting caught, he's getting bullied out the way from Lambert. Lambert's feeling where he is, he knows where he wants it to go. And Wilson ends up trying to head the ball with his back to Lambert. It's bad defending as well. A goal by a man from Ghana cancelled out by a man, this man from Liverpool Ricky Lambert away by Haradis and the whistle obeys back on the ball Picky on to his left, Dindan to his right Belhat is in the break too he's played in Dindan there's a great chance for Aruna Dindan Davis got his feet to it but couldn't keep it out and Aruna Dindan puts Portsmouth back in front South Coast Derby springs to life with three goals in less than eight minutes. And Pompey have the lead again. Aruna Dindan, who got that dramatic equaliser against Sunderland in midweek, scores for the first time in the FA Cup. And Portsmouth may win for the first time at St Mary's. Well, Chris Perry is just unlucky. He's trying to block him with his foot. But Dindan, once he gets his eyes one on one with Davis, there's only one thing in his mind. He's going to try and lift it over him. Davis very unlucky. But as you said, it's swinging in to the end of the minute. The game is very, very open. 
Can Saints come again? Lalana held up by Yemdar. Southampton throw. No, Southampton just paying the price for attacking, and I think over attacking in the midfielders, Clyde just couldn't get him back to help out, and he would have paid the price of a little bit of lapse of concentration in the midfield area. Three goals in less than ten minutes. One for Southampton, two for Portsmouth. Antonio in towards Lambert. Corner given. Well, that's a danger, isn't it? Set pieces, these long throws. It's almost like a corner kick for Southampton. Lambert's going to take this one again. Perry's come forward to join Thomas and Jaini. Three of the back four in there. Lambert. It's towards Hammond. He claims it should be another corner, and it's a goal kick. Well, he's got well at the back post, Hammond. Certainly complaining about something. Let me just see it here. He's got up early enough. I mean, he's got a shout there. It's on the, the back of Wilson's head. It's deflected it. Of course, with a fallen behind in each of their three FA Cup ties so far this season, prior to today, and live to tell the tale. They have survival instincts, that's for sure. Twice now they've led in this game. Well, they didn't lead for long the first time around. Mullins. Davis will toss it forward. Wilson got up early. Didn't foul Barnard. Schneiderlin. El Hatch clear. Down by Wusu Bay to O'Hara. Through the centre towards Piquion. Good calm defended by Perry. Jaidi. So now to put an awful lot into this game. What have they got left? example with Piki on the fresh legs coming in you know when you would look for your captain to give you that bit of lift oh well, he's certainly in there Hammond chasing around all the Portsmouth midfielders Snidely well that was a premeditated foul by Yebda might be cautioned Southampton want to get on with it he hasn't completed his uh, bookkeeping yet. He's making a note of the name of Hassan Yebna. Kelvin Davis with the free kick. Towards the head of Antonio. Well defended that by Belhatch. Who is to obey. He fences his chances against Thomas. No free kick. Oh, it has been given. Over on Grubb was angry, I think, despite the nature of the... Uh, Challenged by Wayne Thomas, he hasn't seen a great deal of football. Um, the excellent Graham Murty has uh, been playing at right back for Southampton. He's just had an ankle operation. They brought John Semabor in in uh, January, and he's been playing in the league games of late. Lambert, here's Barnard, hooked it back towards Lallana, Barnard offside, won't count, won't count. Oh. Lee Barnard was offside. Well, it was just the pressure that was put on, getting a little flex here and there between the two strikers, and you just see it there, as Lallana's had the shot, Barnard... Two yards offside, he knew it himself. If Barnard lets it run and lets Lalana put it in, it's a goal. You don't take the chances on Clive as a striker. The falls there, you're putting in the back of the net to make sure. But he knew right away. But that's just a little bit unlucky, that. A little bit of luck there. A little bit of luck at one end, a little bit of misfortune at the other. That's all that separates the two teams at the moment. 
Piquillon. Well seen by Jaidi. Antonio. Free kick to Southampton. Ten minutes to go. Oh, we can still see another ball coming in the box here now. Jaidi's making his way forward. Adding the height, the presence, they've just seen the pressure. The post would have been under, the two central defenders don't seem to be able to handle it in height. Davis takes. Little header. Touched over, it was Antonio who reached it and James had to reach it too. Goal kick given. I'm just wondering here if it's a long ball. David James has got to keep his eye on it. Yeah. Just had a swing on the bar, if we get a touch. Eight and a half years ago, Southampton moved here from the Dell. Portsmouth on their infrequent visits. They've always been losers on this ground. Ten minutes away. What would be a very famous victory for them? Snyder in. Looking for Lalana. Not into the header away. Well, they're certainly putting it into the channels to keep the pressure on the back four. Antonio going to come across to take the long one. Towards Jaidi. Hooked away by O'Hara. And Dindan will chase this down. Perry's got to win it and does. O'Hara, though, with a beautifully guarded ball into the path of Bell Hatch. And a chance for Portsmouth to seal it here. Bell Hatch, 3 1. Smiles on Portsmouth faces. There haven't been too many of those in the last few weeks. But nothing, nothing could have given this club, this team, a greater tonic than victory at Southampton. And it's close now for Avram Grant. Nadia Belhatch has surely sealed it. Well, it's a vision of Ahara, though, that makes a goal. You know, it's, the back door's always open when you've got to need a challenge. He's got Belhatch. You know, he's having a look up. He didn't look the, the most confident. He's having looks to see if he can play it. But what it's done is it's shifted the goalkeeper off his line. Just there, and there you go, look. It's opened the corner up for him to roll it in. But that all goes down to Jamie Ahara and his quick thinking and his passing ability. Only the pause with fans can be heard now. Seven minutes remaining. Silent Southampton fans. The Pompey chimes are in full cry. Away to our left. Chris Perry has gone off to give way to Lee Holmes. And a chance to risk everything now. In the hope of rescuing the game somehow. Southampton fans can certainly get behind the side because no, I mean, they've, they've given as good as they've got. It's just the fact, I think, a little bit of quality in a couple of occasions in the finishing side of it that has won the game for Portsmouth. Yeah, it's been a close run thing all afternoon, but for much of the afternoon, Southampton have looked the more likely winners. Not now. Let's talk of 40,000 of them going to Wembley next month for the Johnson's Paint Trophy final, but suddenly Portsmouth are thinking about Wembley again. Antonio, though, with a long throw. James comes to get it, but he's taken off his head by Piquion, heading back in by Hammond, forced away by Wilson. He'll go for a corner. Stranger things have happened. Six minutes. Still pressure on him. So Hampton, if he could get a goal back here, there's still time to get back in the game. Lambert takes it, hammered up at the far post, beaten to it though by Wilson. O'Hara again coming out with the ball, it's another Portsmouth counter-attack and it's Bell Hatch on the move again, and it's four against three here momentarily, Bell Hatch with the cross, Owusu Abey, O'Hara, four for Portsmouth! Devastating break! Jamie O'Hara! 
They can hardly believe it. It has been an unbelievable week for Portsmouth one way and another. But it has just gone into the realms of fantasy in their wildest dreams. They couldn't have hoped to score four here today. Well, they certainly couldn't have hoped for it. But again, you know, Bell Hadge on the counter-attack, the pace they have. And then Ahara to back it all up. It's absolutely magnificent. But Bell Hadge again down the left. He has the vision to pick out the players. And then Ahara. Not the simplest task, but what a finish from the lad. He's had a magnificent game for Portsmouth and they're at the heart of everything. And thoroughly deserved that goal. 24th of April 2005, the last meeting of Southampton and Portsmouth, Fratton Park, Portsmouth 4, Southampton 1. Harry Redknapp had recently taken charge of the Saints. And here we are, 13th of February 2010, they meet again, Southampton 1, Portsmouth 4 again. Two wonderfully engineered counter-attacks. A little bit of fortune maybe about the game-breaking goal, really, the second Portsmouth goal, but the last two have been beauties. Oh, they're, they're unbelievable. You know, that just shows you, you know, you cannot afford to leave the back door open at all at the highest level or against a team from the highest level because they'll just punish you. And they've just shown that Portsmouth through the last two goals. O'Hara's been absolutely outstanding. He's not even a Portsmouth player, remember. He belongs to Tottenham Hotspur, but, but he's given his heart in the uh, months that he spent with this uh, troubled team. And so is he. And unable to name his full quota of substitutes for some games. He said in midweek that you find out about the character of people when things are against them. And he's found out a lot about the people in blue today. O'Hara with the cross. players have been up for it, the road are looking one or two occasions but they've stayed behind it, they've kept their head up and you know, we know they're good on the counter-attack and they've got their goals from it Scoreline is so cruel on uh, Southampton but it will, it will be there in the record books forever and a day those of you who've watched us with it, watched this game with us, will know that it's not really been a 4-1 match, but you try telling that Pompey fans in five years and ten years and 15 years' time when they remember this early afternoon on the south coast. Well, it's just a bragging race, isn't it? And it's not just, you know, divisions apart at the minute, so we're not getting the derbies every so often, so you're only relying on the clashes and cup games. We've got the bragging rights, the Portsmouth fans. The boys in the studio have chosen their Eon man of the match, and it is Jamie O'Hara. No oh, deserves it, Clive. It's been at the heart of absolutely everything Portsmouth done, defensively and offensively. He played at Wembley last season, played in the uh, Carling Cup final. He's been such a hero for Spurs in the semi final, but he had a penalty saved in the shootout at Wembley. Is he going back with his adopted club? Lalana with a cross, meanwhile, for Southampton, headed away by Wilson. Antonio, Barnard's there, Wilson climbs high. So the chance for Barnard, rather, got in Lalana's way. And all the heart has gone out of Southampton now. Shirts are off, they'll be on the beach before the afternoon's out. In the pub. <laughs> I don't know how they can take their tops off. All the sun's shining. That is cold. Victory in the High Court on Wednesday. Another Wembley visit would certainly steady the good ship Pompey. 21 months since they beat Cardiff in the final. Owusu Abe looking for a fifth. Played in Europe last season, remember? But their only wins this season since Christmas have been in this competition. They've never won here, never beaten Southampton 
in cup football. But one thing that Southampton have learnt to do in the last few weeks is never say never. One thing that Portsmouth have learnt to do, I should say. Three more minutes of torture for the Saints fans. Owusu Abey trying to rub it in. Right cup for Dinda. Daidi sees to it that it doesn't. Free kick against Ryderson. thing about Southampton players is they're still pushing for it, they've not given up hope, you know, there's still that little belief they might be able to get another one. There's no flag here, Lambert's kept it in, has he? Only for James. And as you said, you just can't stop, you know, Lamp, he's chased everything down for him all day, and again, you know, you're talking 90 minutes and he's still chasing them down. been a cup finalist both as a player and as a manager Alan Pardew never a winner going to be a cup finalist as a manager again next month but with the greatest respect to the Johnson Spates trophy which Southampton will enjoy their day out against Carlisle it's not quite this not quite the FA Cup Well, we're looking at that way anyway, and I mean, the, the FA Cup's great bonuses for them. So that's, as I said, the lower division. It's nice to get to a trip to Wembley, and get that experience of a Wembley trip. I mean, it's first time these those two young Pompey fans have seen their team play against Southampton. O'Hara's well, gone for goal there, by the way. And you just wonder where these two teams will be next season. The promotion would be an outside chance for Southampton at this stage. Portsmouth will do their darndest to avoid relegation. And it's not inconceivable. They could be in the same division. That's the thing, isn't it? It's been that division. <laughs> just don't like clubs going the way that Portsmouth are going in financially, just hoping they can get through it. Well, Richard Hughes has just come on, has played in the last three derbies between the two, one of the only survivors of past encounters. And he's out there again for the uh, final act. Lalana with the low shot, which James Fields. from Avram Grant but every single Portsmouth fan either here or at home or abroad will save at this moment a 4-1 victory at St Mary's over Southampton if any team in the country needed a lift needed a tonic it was Portsmouth and today Avram Grant's men have provided it with what in the end was a thumping victory on enemy territory he doesn't begin to tell the story of the match, but it is all that Portsmouth care about. Southampton 1, Portsmouth 4.